Welcome back to RedHeart.com as well as the Crochet Crowd. I'm your host Mikey and in today's tutorial we're going to explore doing a reflective headband and the headband is fabulous. Now this is what we have today. This is looks like knitting but it's not. It's all done with the Tunisian crochet hook. I'm going to show you how to do this stitch. This is called the knit stitch and you're going to have a great little project. So today we're going to use the reflective by Red Heart and this reflects. So if light hits it, it goes BAM and says wow look at me. So what I want to do today is show you how to do the Tunisian knit stitch so that you can create a headband. I've created one for myself. I love it. it this is chunky. It is warm and when the light hit, hits it, it lights up. So this is perfect for those evenings of walking out in the dark and light can hit it and to keep your ears nice and toasty at the same time. So today's pattern I'm going to be showing you how to do it for adults. You can reduce it down if you want to and basically we're going to start it so that you can customize it to your head in order to go from start to finish. So let's begin now. Well first of all this is my Tunisian crochet hook that I'm using today. I'm going to be using a size 7 millimeter. Okay and that's just bigger than a size K. And basically this is going to be controlling my pattern. So you will need the distance along the shaft here in order to be able to do this particular project or what you can do too is if you have just a regular crochet hook you can just move your hands back a little bit but just watch how it's done and you can make that determination as you go. Now I have put a granny square down here. That doesn't have anything to do with this particular tutorial. Because this is long I don't want it to bang onto the table. So that's why that's there. So let's grab, grab, <laughs> let's grab our reflective yarn today and I'm going to create a slip knot. And I'm going to leave it extra long tail so that I can use the darning needle to sew that in afterward. And now that we have our slip knot, we're ready to go. To start this pattern, all I need you to do is to chain eight. Remember this one on the hook does not count as one. So we have one, two, and three, four, and five, six, seven, and eight. Now you will notice that in this particular design that we're doing, it'll shrink a little bit but not a lot. So if you're doing this for a child and you don't want it to be as wide as this, so this would be the top of your head, this would be like your forehead. So if you want it to do a little narrow, you just have to chain a less if you want to. So let's uh, begin the next process. So you have the chains working back toward the start. And all I want you to do is go to the second chain from the hook and look around and turn it over and look for the back bump and insert your hook into the back bump, bump only. So only one stitch. This will allow you to have a beautiful um, starting as you go and you're just going to pull the yarn through and hold it onto your Tunisian hook. So you can use a regular hook too if you can fit it onto there. So you immediately go to the next chain and just because you've turned it over already it's already going to be appearing to turn over. So you just basically pick up these back uh, humps as you go like that. So now if I chained eight, there should be enough back loops here that there should be eight on here by the time I get all the way across. So we have six and seven. Oops, excuse me. Seven and eight. And so you pulled it all the way through. So now you have all eight onto your Tunisian hook. So if, for example you can have them all compressed like this if you had a smaller hook. It just for tutorial reasons I'm just showing it with this big one just to make it easier for you. So let's start the next process. Now with Tunisian we always have to go back toward this area here. So we go backward. And what I need you to do to start that and this is uh, always going to happen for this. So just watch. You're going to grab the yarn and pull through the first one. Okay. Now what we need to do is grab the yarn and pull through two. Grab the yarn, pull through two. Yarn and pull through two. Yarn, pull through two. Yarn, pull through two, two. And go all the way to the end just like this. So now we're ready to start going in the forward direction as we're going to pick up all these loops again. But this time we're going to do it slightly different in comparison to the simple stitch of Tunisian crochet. Now in simple stitch of Tunisian crochet the most basic stitch is that we start immediately. We do not chain one. We just immediately start. And so in simple stitch there is vertical posts that are going up. And you can see that all going all the way across. 
So normally in simple stitch we slide in behind one of the verticals, grab the yarn and pull up like this and we continue to do that. You're not going to do that here on today's tutorial. This is the knit stitch so it's slightly different. So what you want to do is that you can see the vertical and then you can clearly see the vertical in behind. Okay, so what you just need to do is slip your hook through diagonally toward the back. Grab the yarn, pull up through. Okay, so now we're going to go to the next one. So here's the post on the first. You can see the back one is through the back. So go in diag diagonally so the front post is there. The back post is around the back. Grab the yarn and pull through. So now we simply look for the next one. So here's the front, there's the back, go through diagonally. And what this is doing, and I'm going to continue to do this as I talk to you. So what this is doing, it's turning the stitches sideways to give it the appearance of knitting. So we're going to go and we're going to get all of the stitches except for the very last one. So you can see we have seven here. On the last one, we just simply come into the edge and make sure that there's two yarn strings in front, very much like a chain, grab the yarn and pull through. So we don't go through diagonally on the end, we never do. So now let's go back in the other direction. So we're going to uh, uh, <laughs> yarn over, pull through one only, and then yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, two, and go all the way back in that same manner. So you're thinking, well, where is the knitting? The knitting has just started. So you just cannot see it quite yet. So let's begin the next row. So we see the front post. Again, we're going to go diagonally. So we're always going to do this stitch throughout this project. So we just go in diagonally through the front to the back. And again, this is turning those stitches forward. And now you can start seeing the knitting is starting to open up. So the knitting uh, with this, the knit stitch is very, um, com it compresses everything really tightly. So for example, if you're working on a project and you need so many chains, this is going to pull it more narrower and make it a lot more tighter. So you just cannot transform your pattern very easily with this particular stitch. So in the end, remember what I said, you're going to grab it so that there's two strings in the front, one in the back, pull through. So let's review how to go backward again. We chain one. We're just going to pull it through, sorry, we don't chain one, we just pull it through one and then pull through two, two, two. And that's all this stitch is. It looks amazing. It really does. And so you're going to then start again. So you don't chain one, just see the front string there, just go through diagonally to the back and we continue to do that. It is mindless, it is easy. It makes you look like a knitter <laughs> and you can still enjoy your crochet hook at the same time and you don't have the fuss of two needles and then we come into the edge and remember there's two strings, pull through and then to go backward we pull through the first one and then pull through two, 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 two. And two. So you only need one ball of yarn to be able to do a headband and you can see the knitting is now starting to take effect on the back. You can see it's like everything in the front has just been wow. So I'm just going to do a few more. So diagonally in. So to make this headband really sexy in the end, you have to then just chase it around the border. So you're going to join the one edge. So eventually you're going to get to the length that you want. Just continue to try it onto your head and just don't overstretch it. Um, but you don't want to, um, you want to make sure that it's not to the point where it's too loose because this yarn will stretch and then it will probably be too loose on your head. So you have to find that, that, that secret length in order to get that to match for your head. And so basically once you do that you sew it together and so you'll have it so it's wrapped around your head and then you need to chase each side border with just a single crochet of another color yarn or if you want to use the same color it's up to you. But these are really easy, a lot of fun. Um, because it's reflective it will shine. So therefore you know kids won't have that big of issue with trying to keep their ears warm with the, the peer pressure that they're having today. And this is a great little project. I'm um, great for teaching kids too. I think this is one of those ones where you could probably get your child to and actually make their own winter wear and really don't have any 
fighting about it because the reflective just takes it up a whole nother level. So that's it for today. Just have to keep measuring it onto your forehead until you get the exact size that you want. And then once you have those together, just make sure that when you sew it, you sew the edges together. So this edge and this edge will join all the way around. And then just come along and just put in a single crochet with the regular crochet hook through the edges and bam, you will have an amazing project. Until next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd. We'll see ya.